Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And in today's video I'm going to be doing some painting. I thought it would be a good idea to use a photo reference because I've not done that for a while. And I thought it would be a fun challenge to do a landscape and do it in two different art mediums. So I'm going to do the first one in watercolour and then I'm going to use the same photo and show how I'd approach it uh, using acrylics. So to begin with, the watercolours. My set is from Windsor & Newton, but uh, brands don't matter, but I know you quite often like to know, so I'll, I'll tell you. And then I'm using uh, just one medium-sized round watercolour paintbrush. I'm going to be using a lot of water in this uh, painting, so I'm going to need some paper towel. And then I like to have two jars of water. So this is the image that I have chosen and this is a photograph I took a few years ago on a trip to Iceland. I'll put a link in the uh, description box to where you can find this image if you want to paint along with this. So start by taping my paper down. I'm going to be using a lot of water with this so that makes the paper buckle but if I tape it down then uh, it'll stretch back to its original shape. So I often use washi tape for taping my paper down, but I think this is going to need something a little stronger, so I'm using some artist masking tape here. I'm going to be starting by taking a large flat brush, but just use the biggest brush that you've got. And I'm just putting clean water down all over the page and spreading it around evenly. You should be able to see a nice sheen on the surface of your page. And then I'm pretty much going to be using one colour today um, and it's a kind of a greyish brown kind of colour. And I'm mostly using Burnt Umber and I'm going to mix in a little bit of Payne's Grey just to mute it. And then as I paint I'll add some more grey in some areas and some more brown in others just to give it a little bit of a, a difference in tone. And then to begin painting, I simply apply it to the areas that I want to be nice and dark. So I'm painting the sky here. So I'm just looking at my reference image and wherever the darkest areas are, I'm just going to drop in bits of um, pigment. And then when that needs some blending into the lighter areas. I can just use some clean water and help it along a bit. When I've got the basic form of my uh, sky in with those dark areas of the clouds, uh, you'll see that the, the pigment starts bleeding and blending across the page. And while it's still wet, you can add in some lighter areas. So the areas that have got particular highlights in, now I'll start taking away pigment from those areas. I can clean my brush and uh, dry it off and that allows it to pick up wet pigment from the surface of the page. So I'll use my paper towel to dry my brush and then I just dab it into the areas where I want to pick up pigment. So there are areas in the clouds where it's really bright so the sun's coming through those areas and I can just pick up with my brush from those places. Now there are some areas where I want it to be even brighter so I can scrunch up my paper towel and dab it into those areas. This also allows me to get that effect of nice fluffy clouds by creating some really unusual uh, shapes that would be difficult to get with a paintbrush. Now I want to paint the hills in and so there's a little a slightly more defined line so I'm making a kind of a mid-toned mix of that uh, Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber mix and I'm going to apply it with uh, a, a little wiggle of my wrist to get that hill looking nice and jagged. I'm going to start about halfway across the page uh, because it's really quite uh, obvious on the right hand side of the page um, but on the left hand side of the page it kind of fades away to nothing. So I'm going to paint the right hand side of the hills in and then I'm going to wash my brush 
and just use the clean water on the left hand side and allow those colours to blend together and allow the left hand side of the hills just to fade away to nothing. Now I want to get a little bit of differentiation in there to get the sense of the the sun beaming across those hills and the, the haziness of it. So I'm using the same trick again, using my paintbrush to pick up pigment in places I want to be lighter and using my uh, paper towel as well. Now you've got to be careful with the paper towel because the first time I did it I picked up far too much pigment and had to go back and apply some more and read the whole thing again. But you can still do that as long as your uh, as long as your paint on your page is still wet. You can still move it around and play with it, um, and yeah, you can keep going until you're happy with it. The other thing about the paper towel is that sometimes you get the texture of the like the bubbles in the paper towel on the page, and so sometimes if I see that and I don't want that, I can go over that area just with a very slightly damp brush or even a little bit of pigment and just even those out. And then I really wanted to get that little steam plume on the hills. So I go and dab with my paper towel again and, uh, and try and get that sense of just that little, uh, that little detail in there. It's not necessary, but I, I really like that. It's, uh, it's, it's part of the landscape of Iceland where you just see the, uh, the, the steam coming up off un from underneath the ground. And then I mix the same colour up but a little bit darker this time and I try and apply the foreground, trying to get a nice straight line um, so that the the, the lake, um, I'm not sure it's a lake or if it's a lagoon, uh, is, uh, is nicely, uh, nicely well defined. Add in a few little details just on the on the land, on the hills, and then a few little marks in the water that give it a sense of kind of reflections or just that variation in how the water looks. And then I'll go in and make the island that uh, you can see to the left of the picture. So I'm just again using a very dark pigment and drawing a little shape wiggling my brush when I draw the top just to try and get a, an organic kind of feel to it. And then again I use that trick with the paintbrush to take away some of the pigment on the left hand side because it's a little bit lighter on there. And so that's this painting done. I'm just going to leave it to dry and uh, yeah and then very carefully peel off the tape. This is a little bit sticky this tape so um, sometimes it can tear the paper but if you apply a hairdryer to it before you tear it off then you shouldn't have any problems. For the second painting I'm going to use the same image but this time I'm going to uh, do some acrylics. So for this I've taped down some paper and you could use the same watercolour paper, but I've actually got some paper from an acrylic pad, which has got a surface texture on it that is, it kind of looks a little bit like canvas. And then the brushes I'm using for acrylics are slightly different. Um, so I'm mainly going to be using uh, this, uh, it's called a filbert, it's like flat brush, but it's round at the end. And I find it really useful for, for acrylics. And then I've got just a tiny little round brush for details. Acrylics brushes are much stiffer and firmer than the ones that you'd use for watercolour. Watercolour brushes are designed to hold lots of water in their bristles, uh, but uh, the acrylics ones you kind of want to be quite stiff and flat and the, the paint kind of sits on the surface of it more than kind of going into the brush. 
You want to be really careful with your acrylics brushes because you need to wash them out pretty much as soon as you've finished using them because if the acrylic paint dries in the brush it can be very very hard to get out. So I have these uh, Liquitex heavy body acrylic paints but any acrylic paints will work for this and I'm going to be using four colours for this. I've got a yellow, a white, another brown, this one's raw umber and a blue, this is ultramarine. So I'm going to be starting by putting a background wash of colour on this. So I'm going to mix up the, uh, the yellow with a little bit of the brown and get a kind of yellow ochre colour. If I had a yellow ochre in a tube, I'd probably just use that. You may be thinking that I don't want my painting to be yellow, but painting it a background colour that's kind of got a glow that comes through gives the painting uh, a kind of a warmer, more inviting feel to it. So you don't want to use a lot of water with acrylics generally, but for this first layer, I want to create a really soft wash of colour. So I'm going to add a little bit of water into the mix and then just pick it up on the brush and you pretty much just need to scrub it into the page. It doesn't really matter which way the brush strokes go because you're not going to see them. All you need to do at this point is to get rid of the white of the paper. And so once you've finished doing your wash of colour, you just need to let that dry. I'm always impatient and never leave it long enough, but it only takes a few minutes. Now for the rest of the painting. I'm going to use the white, the brown and the blue, so I'll squeeze myself out a little bit onto the palette. I'm going to be starting with the light. I don't like to use white on its own, so I'm going to take some of the white and add just a little bit of uh, the brown into it, just to kind of create a very kind of pale, creamy colour. And then it's probably a little bit too warm, especially with that yellow underneath, which is kind of kind of glow through it. So I'll just add a tiny bit of the blue into it and that'll make more of a kind of a warm grey colour. And then I'll take this and paint it wherever I see the lightest lights. So I'm just dabbing this on. There's no particular technique to it. Just get the paint on the paper as quickly as possible. And I keep going with that colour and that mix until all of the lightest areas are blocked in. And now I'm going to mix up the darkest areas. So I'm mainly mixing the brown with a little bit of the blue and then a tiny little bit of the white as well. If you've mixed up a colour and you want to see how it works and how it might sit on the painting before you start painting it, you can always bring up your brush to the your reference image and just see does the colour match, does it look about the right tone and then you can make it lighter or darker as you as you think. And then once I've got the darkest areas in, I can mix up some mid greys and fill in the space between them. And so I'm just going to keep going and mixing up different greys from, from the lightest to the darkest and blocking in all of those areas. Now I want to mix up a very dark colour and I might add a little bit more blue into this uh, because I'm going to paint in the foreground. I want to get a relatively straight line along there, but it doesn't matter if it's perfect because I can always touch it up later. And then I'm going to try and define a little bit more the, the hills and the way that they come down to meet the lake. At various points in my painting I need to kind of step back and see do I need anything else and 
I think maybe I've blended the darks and the lights away too much, so I'll start going back in and adding more areas of dark. Once your first pass is done and you've blocked in those areas, then you can go in again and refine them a little bit. So spend some time looking at the, uh, the reference image and try and work out how it compares to the image that you, you've painted so far. Do any bits need moving around a little bit? Are there bits of highlights or lowlights that are in slightly wrong place? You might want to mix some dark again and re-establish some areas of dark and then mix some even lighter lights and uh, go in and add those highlights in again just to create that difference between uh, different areas on the page at this stage you're really refining your image and this can go on for a long time So the last thing that I do is to use that very fine brush to do some little refined details on that lake and just to try and get those lines nice and smooth. And then just a couple of swipes to add some highlights to the left hand side of that island. This is my completed acrylic. So here are the two paintings side by side. The watercolour was definitely quicker to do. The acrylics took a lot longer. I like both of them. and I think they've both got their charms. They've, they've, there's something nice about each of them. Let me know in the comments if you have a preference. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I will leave a link to the reference photo in the description if you want to paint along and have a go yourself. If you've enjoyed watching this today, then please do give the video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, then please do subscribe. If you make anything inspired by my videos, I love to see them. And you can always post them on Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. 
So thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.